In Red Hood and the Outlaws Volume 3 from 2011, Killer Croc is shown to stop someone out of committing suicide. To set up context, Red Hood is attempting to track down the Untitled, which is an ancient clan of siblings that have all but nearly wiped out the All Cast, and the All Cast is an ancient group of warrior monks led by their leader, Dukra, who trained Jason Todd after his resurrection. Dukra was killed by the Untitled, which is the motivation for Red Hood trying to track them down since Dukra meant a lot to him. The All Cast resided in an area called the Chamber of All, where Red Hood and his team of Arsenal and Starfire travel to find some clues on the Untitled. When they arrive, they meet someone named Saru the Proctor there who is the guardian of the Chamber of All that has lived for more than 4 millennia. Saru allows them to enter the chamber but on the one condition that he holds each of their most cherished memories as collateral and can only have them back if they return alive. Red Hood and his team comply and enter the chamber, which immediately ends up being a nexus, a huge confusing room where Red Hood says they can go anywhere or any when. Red Hood tells him he doesn't know where they're going, but follows Duker's advice which is pretty much to follow his instincts. Meanwhile, Saru gets bored and decides to look into the most cherished memories, even though it's against protocols according to him. He starts with Starfires, showing Starfire as a child being traded away in a slavery in order to bring peace for two worlds, the Citadel, a fascist interplanetary empire, and Tamaran, the home planet of Starfire. In the memory, she gets compassion from one of the Citadel warriors, who tries to cheer Starfire up. Starfire thanks him for his kindness, but then suddenly, she attacks the soldier and straight up kills him, kind of incinerating him from the inside. She said that she will not take compassion from a spineless worm. The other Citadel soldiers start approaching, with Starfire threatening all of them as well. Saru comments on that being disturbing and wondering why that's her most cherished memory, which is pretty funny. Back with Red Hood and his team, they enter a room within the chamber with an ancient artifact at the end of it. Red Hood thinks it's from the Untitled and that they're using it to taunt him. Starfire then exclaims to them that they should leave the room because she believes that it's all a trap for them. Red Hood and Arsenal try to brush it off, but is immediately met upon with a bunch of spikes coming out of the floor, and they soon realize that they aren't spikes, but the hair, I think, of a giant monster. Jason and Arsenal are okay and manage to survive. Jason tells Starfire to concentrate on taking the monster out since she is their biggest weapon. As the fight goes on, the monster actually grabs Starfire with his tongue and eats her. It then cuts back to Saru, with him now looking into Roy Harper aka Arsenal's most cherished memory. In his memory, he's in a heated battle with Killer Croc, getting his butt kicked. Killer Croc tells him that enough is enough and asks Roy why he won't stay down. Roy tells him that it doesn't get any downer for him at this point in his life. For context, Roy Harper had a heroin addiction which caused his mentor, Oliver Queen, to kick him out of Team Arrow, which led Roy to a spiral of depression and suicidal thoughts. Croc realizes that Roy is using him to put him out of his own misery. Roy tells him that's a genius plan, but Croc tells him no, and that quote unquote genius would be to pull his head out of his butt and figure out how to get on with his life. Croc asks him if being beaten to death is really the way he wants to go. Croc tells him that he would love to kill him, but won't do it. He tells Roy if he wants to kill himself, to leave him out of it. Those words helped Roy, and Roy tells him that for a monster, Croc isn't such a bad guy, with Croc responding by saying he won't think that the next time they meet. This was my favorite part of the comic. Croc, who has known nothing but darkness his entire life, helped Roy come to his senses and to live again. It lets you know that a lot of Batman's villains could have been great assets to the world if things were different, and it's sad to see how things actually panned out for them. Saru mentions how he was almost sweet in a pathetic kind of way. Cutting back to Red Hood and his team, Arsenal fends off the monster while Jason goes for the artifact, but once he grabs it, he realizes that it's just a snow globe of Colorado, which surprises him. Starfire then kills the huge monster from the inside, and grabs Roy and Jason in the process, flying them out of there to safety, and with their mission completed, they leave the chamber. They get back to Saru, and Jason asks him if he knows anything about the snow globe, in which he replies saying he doesn't. Starfire and Arsenal get their memories back, but Jason walks away, refusing to get back his most cherished memory, telling Saru to keep it. It then shows what his most cherished memory was, which was a simple night at the Wayne Manor when he was Robin. Jason was sick with the flu, and Alfred informs Bruce about it and tells him that it wouldn't be ideal for him to go on patrol. Batman tells Jason that Alfred is right, and that he is getting sidelined until he gets better, with Robin looking sad about it, but complies. Jason and Alfred are then shown inside Wayne Manor, with Alfred trying to take care of Jason, but Jason yells at Alfred saying he's not a baby and can handle himself. Bruce then pops in out of nowhere, telling him that taking a night off once in a while isn't a crime, and asks Jason what they're going to watch together. The story ends with a young Jason falling asleep on Bruce's shoulder, ending Jason's most cherished memory he's ever had.